The next item of business is a motion from the, standard, from the Committee on Standards and Privileges. The Business Committee has agreed to allow you up to 30 minutes for this debate. The proposer will have 10 minutes to propose the motion and 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. Clark, please read the motion. That this Assembly notes that the Northern Ireland Assembly Commissioner for Standards is unable to act in relation to a compl complaint. Or, or, order, please. If members are leaving the Chamber, leave quietly. If otherwise, re resume your seat so that the clerk can be heard. Thank you. Continue. That this Assembly notes that the Northern Ireland Assembly Commissioner for Standards is unable to act in relation to a complaint from Mr Sammy Wilson MP, dated 15 December 2015, appoints Mr Gerard Elias as an Acting Commissioner in accordance with Section 23.1 of the Assembly Members Independent Financial Review and Standards Act, Northern Ireland 2011, to investigate all such complaints directs that this appointment shall cease when Mr Elias has reported on all such complaints and further directs that the terms of his appointment, in particular his remuneration will, subject to any necessary modification, be the same as those of the Northern Ireland Assembly Commissioner for Standards. I call the Chairperson of the Committee on Standards and Privileges, Mr Paul Given, to move the motion. Deputy Speaker, um, I rise on behalf of the Committee on Standards and Privileges to move the motion. On the 6th of January uh, this year, Douglas Bain, the Northern Ireland Assembly Commissioner for Standards, uh, wrote to inform the Committee on Standards and Privileges that he did not consider that he was able to act in respect of complaints by Mr Sammy Wilson MP because of a significant risk that any decision he would take could be perceived to be biased. Uh, these complaints relate to an issue of declaring interests in a meeting of a committee. Uh, Mr Bain informed the committee that in, in the course of an interview in June 2015, Mr Wilson uh, had made comments about the Commissioner that he considered were defamatory and that they have been subject of a pre-action to Mr Wilson from Mr Bain's solicitors. The Commissioner therefore believes that whatever the outcome of his consideration, it could be perceived as being biased and to retain the integrity of the process, it would be appropriate to appoint an acting commissioner who is perceived to be impartial. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Assembly has always recognised that there may be circumstances where the commissioner is unable to act. That is why Section 23.1 of the Assembly Members uh, Act 2011 states, when the office of the commissioner is vacant or the commissioner is, for any reason, Unable to act, the Assembly may appoint a person to discharge any function of that office until such time as may be specified by the terms and conditions of such appointment, and a person so appointed is referred to in this section as an acting commissioner. What we are seeking to do today, Mr Deputy Speaker, is exactly that, to appoint an acting commissioner in relation to these particular complaints because the Commissioner has told us that he is unable to act. This is the second occasion when the committee has had to seek to appoint an acting commissioner. The first occasion was in 2013 when the Assembly appointed the then Scottish Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life, Mr Stuart Allen, to consider complaints following a declared interest by the Commissioner. The question of how the Assembly might use this power was considered uh, at a 2000 th in 2013 during the Standards Network Conference. This conference brought together various commissioners and standards officials from across the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. It was recognised at this time that there was statutory provision to appoint an acting commissioner not only here at the Assembly but also at the Scottish Parliament and the National Assembly for Wales. And it was acknowledged that the respective commissioners would be well placed to carry out the role of acting commissioner in other jurisdictions should the need ever arise. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, I was pleased then uh, that the Standards Commissioner for Wales, Mr Gerard Elias, indicated that he would be willing to carry out the role of Acting Commissioner in this instance if the Assembly wished him to do so. Gerard Elias QC is a leading criminal uh, QC with over 40 years legal experience who has been involved in many of the most important criminal cases on the Welsh circuit in recent years. He also has many years experience in the field of professional discipline at a high profile United Kingdom level, particularly in sport. Mr Elias is a highly qualified and experienced public 
office holder with considerable experience in the investigation of complaints made against elected representatives. I think it is also important to point out that Mr Elias has confirmed that he is not disqualified from being appointed as an acting commissioner. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, the motion before the Assembly today provides for Mr Elias to be able to investigate these specific complaints and any further related complaints. This means that should any further related complaints be submitted, Mr Elias would be able to investigate them without our needing to bring forward a further motion. The motion directs uh, that this appointment shall cease when Mr Elias has reported on all such complaints. The motion also directs that the terms of Mr Elias's appointment, in particular his re remuneration, will, subject to any necessary modification, be the same as those of the Northern Ireland Assembly Commissioner for Standards. This is an important point, particularly for those who may have had concerns about the costs of appointing an acting commissioner. Under the terms of his appointment, the commissioner is not paid a salary, rather he is paid for those pieces of work uh, that he undertakes. If he doesn't undertake a particular piece of work, then he doesn't get paid for it. Of course, that means that where an acting commissioner investigates a complaint instead of the commissioner, and where his remuneration is the same as the commissioner's, there is no additional cost to the public purse for the time taken to carry out that investigation. So I want to emphasise that point. Save for perhaps some travel costs, there is no additional cost to the Assembly as a result of this appointment. So, Mr Speaker, that uh, brings to a close my remarks in my capacity as Chairman of the Committee. Uh, if I can just make some comments as a member of the Democratic uh, Unionist Party. Um, it is somewhat disappointing um, for the party that Mr Bain has felt the need to recuse himself in these circumstances. Um, Mr Wilson made um, very significant complaints, uh, and we believe that there is no reason why Mr Bain could not carry out um, this investigation. However, uh, the Act, as I have already indicated, uh, provides him with the power for any reason to recuse himself. Um, there has been some exchanges of correspondence with Mr Wilson and Mr Bain in respect of this issue, and we are, as a party, surprised that Mr Bain uh, did feel it necessary uh, to seek clarification from Mr Wilson if he was content for Mr Bain to be the person to carry out this investigation. Uh, and let me just um, quote from Mr Wilson um, a letter that the, the committee had sight of in response to Mr Bain's request by him if he would be content uh, for Mr Bain to carry out the investigation. Mr Wilson says, to date, I am unaware that any other complainant has been asked to meet conditions imposed by yourself prior to your agreement to proceed with her complaint. If you do make this a regular requirement, perhaps you could furnish me with examples of others who have had some sort of filter applied to their issue before you uh, decided to act. Uh, I trust that your letter is not some ham-fisted attempt to carry out a vendetta against someone who had the temerity to stand up to you. I will give you the benefit of the doubt on that and will look forward to an early indication as to how you intend to deal with the very serious matters which I have drawn to your attention and which I am sure the public would expect you to investigate without preconditions. Uh, so, uh, Mr Wilson has been making it very clear that he is content for Mr Bain to carry out this investigation. He is not aware that either of the individuals complained of have expressed any dissatisfaction with Mr Bain being the investigator to do that. And therefore, we are um, surprised that Mr Bain has felt the need um, to recuse himself. Uh, and in a recent uh, piece of correspondence from Mr Bain again to Mr Wilson, he explained uh, that his decision was based upon paragraph 6.3 of the General Procedures Direction uh, to justify his decision. That direction states, at all times, acting in accordance with the principles of natural justice and fairness, and it then goes on to say in that direction, includes the right of the complainant and the member about whose conduct the complaint has been made to have the matter determined by a commissioner who is impartial who, or who is perceived as being uh, impartial. Mr Wilson, in this most recent letter, dated the 9th of February, back to Mr Bain, um, responds, and again, let me quote, since I have not asked for the matter to be dealt with by another commissioner, and since I understand you have not sought the view of the person about whom I complained, it is clear that the paragraph to which you refer cannot and does not give 
the opportunity for you to evade your responsibilities on this matter. Suffice to say, Mr. Deputy Speaker, um, we're putting on the record that we are not satisfied with the reasons that have been given by Mr. Bain. Uh, that said, however, there is a recognition that the power rests with him to recuse himself. He has decided to do that, and as such, uh, we are left with no alternative in these circumstances but to agree with the motion, as we did at the committee, that we would, we would appoint uh, the acting commissioner uh, to take forward this complaint, and therefore the party will be supporting uh, the motion today. Jared Diver. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Well, it just seems sensible. Obviously, the chair of the committee has outlined um, his position around this. But um, I think, given the, co the uh, commissioner's thoughts on the matter, that he, fe he feels that it's inappropriate that he'd be able, be able to oversee this uh, complaint, I think it's only right that we do proceed along these lines. So we will be supporting the motion. Call Mr. Paul Given to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Okay, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and uh, thank you uh, to Mr. Diver for his contribution. He's a, 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 new, a new, one of our new members to the committee and uh, has been very diligent in his attendance and scrutiny role that he has been carrying out, so I welcome his contribution today. But given that this is a very uh, straightforward motion today, um, I'm happy to commend the motion to the House. The question is that the motion standing in the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it.